What's going on, people? It is uh, about 20 after 9 in the morning here in Rice Hill at the Pilot. My marker 148 and I-5 in Oregon. Uh, as promised, I'm going to do a fifth wheel sliding video, and it was suggested to me to also do a uh, tire chain video and a tandem video, but the first things first, I'm going to do uh, the fifth wheel video because that seems to be uh, a lot of confusion for people because either they're uh, not being taught how to do it or they're not being taught the right way and uh, or the safest way. And uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But first things first that I want to get out of the way is uh, some shout outs. Uh, I want to say what's up to Thor, Sinister. You guys know them. If you don't, then you better do some Googling. That's all I'm going to say. You better Google. And I'm not talking about Thor from the movie. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, and another shout out to uh, Indiana Jack, uh, my compadre, who is uh, an, a, a full-fledged owner-operator. Again, congratulations, man, for getting the title of that. And um, uh, let's see, one more. Oh, yeah, let's uh, jump over to the dark side. Say what's up to Lorenzo, my boy from Idaho Falls. He came over to Night from Warner uh, when Sinister jumped over. Uh, so what's up, Renzo? I'm glad you finally changed that ringback tone. I uh, couldn't listen to any more orchestra music when I'm calling you. Uh, Metallica is much better. Hopefully, I can continue to get you to change it at least once a week. I mean, come on, man. It's only $8 a month. So, anyways. Watch uh, Thor's wife's video that she put up. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really good. And uh, make sure that your lady watches it. More importantly, I don't really care if you guys watch it. It doesn't really matter. Get your lady to watch it. All right, so if you got a wife, a girlfriend, fiance, uh, whatever, significant other at home, make sure she watches the video. Now, first things first, when it comes, I keep saying first things first, but anyways, first step in uh, sliding your fifth wheel, okay? So get your uh, pen and paper handy, or uh, if you're watching this on a tablet or a, or a computer or whatever, get uh, your phone ready so you could take some memos or some notes. Or if you have a really good memory, just remember. Okay, first thing you're gonna do, obviously, is you're gonna scale your load. All right, I always use a cat scale if it's possible uh, because uh, it's the best way to cover your ass, okay? And plus, you get these cool little things on all your scale tickets, cool little collector cards. I give them to my best friend's son. Uh, I know a lot of people save them, but anyways, there's that. I'll pick that up later. I can't stand stuff on my floor. But anyways, uh, here you go. I drive a uh, International Pro Star, as most of you know, uh, and she is a sexy beast. Scarlet is her name. But anyways, uh, Scarlet and I, uh, when we're cruising, we got a heavy load. Sometimes we need to slide our fifth wheel. And on this Pro Star, when you slide two holes on that fifth wheel, you move 500 pounds. Now that's two full slides you'll see when we go outside and you see the fifth wheel and the pins you'll know what I'm talking about so uh, remember if you move the fifth wheel forward the weight comes forward move the fifth wheel back the weight goes back so if you go back you're taking weight off the steers and the drives and putting it on the tandems right right you move it up the weights coming off the tandems going on to the drives and the steers okay so remember after you do a fifth wheel slide it's a pain in the ass but always rescale your load rescale your load don't ever guess okay but uh like i said uh one hole on my fifth wheel is uh 250 pounds two full holes is 500 pounds and uh we'll later videos we'll get into uh sliding the tandems and uh chaining up and stuff but right now we're just focusing on this so hold all those questions anyways the only reason you would ever need to slide your fifth wheel is uh if you're overweight on your drives or on your steers because if you're over gross sliding your fifth wheel is not going to help you so you would slide your fifth wheel if you need to move weight off your steers if you're too heavy or off your drives uh, so that you can get fuel or whatever the case may be all right but I'm going to show you how to do this safely efficiently and then once you uh, learn how to do it it'll be a breeze to you trust me now on the pro stars that uh, night has we do not have airbag drops in these trucks so uh, we have to crank the landing gear to high heaven uh, until you see daylight pretty much between the fifth wheel and the trailer. And uh, by, what I mean by daylight is 
you'll you'll see you'll see a gap kind of start to open up and that means that the weight is off the truck and it's on the trailer so and even with an empty trailer i would suggest putting the landing gear down uh just as a safety precaution and uh another thing once or twice a month slide your fifth wheel just to make sure that it moves freely okay you don't want to get in a situation where the pins get stuck or whatever so uh just to keep it working properly kind of like a preventative maintenance if you will so anyways like i said uh we're going to put the landing gear down at least on my truck until i start to see a gap form between the fifth wheel and the uh the plate under the trailer okay and um uh, the reason we do that is to remove the weight from the truck <clears throat> remove the weight and the pressure from the fifth wheel so that we can slide really easy now will the fifth wheel slide if i don't do that oh heck yes because you keep the trailer brakes locked and uh, it moves but you have to put so much torque and so much force into be able to move that weight that you're liable to rip your fifth wheel off and the trailer's gonna be sitting on the ground behind you or if you're going the other direction you're gonna be reading your trailer number in your sleeper and uh, we don't want that to happen. So remember, finesse is the key to this game, okay? Ease, ease it, ease it, ease the throttle, ease the clutch, lowest gear possible. You don't wanna tear shit up, okay? We do not wanna tear shit up. We don't wanna break shit, all right? So, uh, and you guys with the airbag drop, I wish I had mine back, I had it in my Volvo, but anyways, uh, it, the airbag drop will help you put the landing gear down uh, until you hear you know your airbags start to hiss a little bit. That means the weight's coming off of them. And then uh, whenever you go to slide, before you unlock the fifth wheel, drop the airbags, and that'll help you make it a lot easier. You don't have to crank as far as I do. So anyways, let's go outside. I'll show you the fifth wheel, explain a couple of things out there, and then we'll actually get into the slide. So see you outside. Okay, so here we are outside underneath my truck. And as you can see, there is the fifth wheel and there's the two pins that I was talking about. Now remember, if I slide those pins up, two full moves, so if they were, both of those pins were in the two holes to the left, that's 500 pounds. If I move just the furthest uh, pin, the pin on the left, if I move that up one hole and the pin to the right is right behind it, that's only going to be 250 pounds. So it's going to get a little shaky here so I can reach in and point for you guys. So if I put this pin in this hole, that means I'm going to move 500 pounds. Okay. If I put this pin in this hole, that's 250 pounds. Okay. So hopefully you guys catch my drift on that one. All right. Now I want everyone to remember. Finesse, finesse, finesse. Be very careful when you do this. And if you're scooting your trailer in, if you're moving your fifth wheel forward towards the cab of the truck, you need to be even more careful when you're turning. Make wider turns than you normally do. Be very careful backing up. You just don't want to break shit, all right? So remember, be careful. Remember, you want your landing gear all the way down. So, get to cranking, people. Uh, all the way. I'm gonna look while I'm cranking here. See behind me? Uh-huh. See that purple over there? It's a dirty truck. Very dirty truck. Sinister, Lorenzo, you should be ashamed of how dirty this truck looks. Just saying. Okay guys, so I got the landing gear down. You can hear the airbags uh, starting to hiss because the weight is coming off the truck, okay? And uh, you can't really see it, I don't think, but I can't show it on here. But you can see a gap starting to open up here between the, the fifth wheel and the trailer. And that's what we want. So now, back in the truck. Now as you can imagine, if you don't nail this the first time it starts to become a real pain in the rear end because you're in and out of the truck in and out of the truck cranking the landing gear down cranking them up rescaling back and forth back and forth so 
it becomes a real pain. Anyways, uh, on to the next step. Now you're gonna ask yourself, little dog, why in the hell are we looking at the ground? And I'm gonna tell you, uh, when sliding your fifth wheel, you basically take a guesstimation. Uh, each pin is probably, you know, a good maybe three inches or so apart. Uh, the whole thing is. So, before you move your truck, uh, mine's off right now so you guys can actually hear me, uh, you pick a point on the ground. So, uh, I'll move this a little bit so you can see. Now, if you notice my steps with the, uh, with the line on the pavement, bottom step, the third hole, is almost directly across from that. And uh, those holes are about the same distance uh, apart from each other that the pins are. So uh, I use a point on the ground that's stationary, a point on the truck that's stationary, to know how far I need to drive I can forward or backward. Now remember, this is a game of inches. And uh, you want to make sure that you're very, very Okay. okay, now remember, in the truck, uh, all trucks are different inside. Like I said, this is a Pro Star. Uh, the button that you're going to want to hit is this one right here. Okay, fifth wheel slide. Okay, you do not want to unlock the jaws of the fifth wheel. Okay, you just want to slide it. So leave this one alone. This is the one that we're going to be hitting. And remember how I was saying about sliding your fifth wheel once or twice a month with an empty trailer just to make sure that it's operational and preventative maintenance type thing. This is where that comes into play. Uh, when I hit that button, those pins are going to go in. And there's two pins on this side and two pins on the other side. When I hit that button, the fifth wheel is going to suck those pins in because it's air. It's going to suck those pins in and uh, then it'll move freely. Okay. Now sometimes those pins will not go in, and all you do is just put the truck in gear, let just little pressure off the clutch, just so the truck moves just a smidge, and usually it'll suck them right in. All right? Now remember what I said, it's a huge game of inches. So when we move backwards to get our pins to unlock and to slide our fifth wheel, we wanna make sure we leave the trailer air supply alone. We're only messing with the tractor right now. Okay, so, start code. Anyways, we're in reverse, and I'm just gonna ease on the clutch. Just waiting. There, very, very simply, and I heard the pins pop in, okay? So you gotta listen as well. Now we're gonna set the brakes. Double check. Okay, guys, so our pins are popped. All right, notice they're all stuck in. You want to check this side and the other side, and it's all pins going in. And here is the other side. The pins are all stuck in. Okay? Now, remember when we slide very, very, very carefully. Okay? Very carefully. Just make sure you know which direction you're going and do it easily. Okay guys, so now you can see that we slid our fifth wheel and we moved it forward. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put my back where it was, but uh, if I wanted to lock it in place there, I go in the truck, hit the button, and then just inch the truck forward or backwards depending on which hole I want to go into, and the pins will pop right back in. Okay? Alright. And there's our pins. I put it right back in the same place because I don't need to new move mine, but uh, I just did it for the video. So, uh, anyways, remember landing gear all the way down, okay? And you can do this. It's real simple, guys. Real simple. You can do it. I, I promise you can. Now, just a few more tips that will be helpful. Uh, slide your fifth wheel on a level spot if possible, okay? find the most level ground that you can. It, uh, it'll definitely help you when it comes to cranking the landing gear high enough, okay? Um, remember, easy, easy, do it easy. I can't stress enough 
do it easy. Don't go slamming that thing, and you'll see idiots out here breaking crap because they're slamming the truck around, you know. Uh, double check that the pins went in, all the pins. Double check that all the pins came back out, all the pins, okay. And then rescale your load. Don't ever guess because every move is going to be different, and I know someone's going to tell me, oh, little dog, you're so wrong. It's 260 pounds or it's 150 pounds or 500 pounds listen every load is different every truck is different and every move moves a different amount of weight every time now 200 pounds is a good guesstimate for one hole on a pro star if you're driving a freightliner or a volvo or a pete or a kenworth it's going to be different every time for every truck for every load you're going to move a different amount of weight that's why i say rescale 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 but make sure the landing gear down the whole way that you're on level ground and you just take your time don't rush it okay do not rush this this is something that you cannot rush all right so hopefully uh i didn't miss anything in the video um and uh, that uh it helps you uh, at least uh, kind of have a rough understanding of how to slide the fifth wheel. Um, another good pointer that I want to add is uh, make sure you mark where your pins were before you move. So use, uh, you know, uh, a pen or, or a Sharpie or something and put a little dot just so you know where your pins were before you move. And uh, that way you know what hole you started at uh, to begin with. So hopefully that helps you. Um, anyways, if you have any questions, uh, send me an email, littledogrollin at gmail.com, L-I-L-D-A-W-G-R-O-L-L-I-N at gmail.com. Uh, find me on Facebook, YouTube, you get the picture. But uh, share the video, and uh, remember, you trainers out there, do it right the first time.